All right, I got big news for you, just in time for Christmas, actually. Um, I am now publishing my previously secret business. Uh, for the past couple months, I have been reprinting out-of-print books. Um, this is something that I've always wanted because I'm one of those people I just cannot, I do not believe in reading, reading things on a screen. I can't psychologically do it. It's not real. Unless you have books physically on your shelf that you can physically leaf through, it means literally nothing. So I have now, um, actually for the past couple months, I've been doing this just to get all of the kinks out of it before I tell everyone on my YouTube channel. But you can go to lindypress.net. Um, I have five books live right now. The idea behind it is just taking books that you cannot find in print anymore and putting them in print in nice, beautifully formatted LaTeX documents rather than the trash you usually see on like reprinters that you can get on Amazon and eBay. Or it's even worse, like, I don't know, like, they don't have any kind of quality control. I'll just say that. You'll just find text formatted all over the place. So I just wanted to, let's, let's actually look. Let's just as an example, let's look uh, at a book, uh, what it looks like physically and uh, the document behind it, okay? So these, now, when I started my channel, you may remember that I used to talk a lot about typesetting documents in LaTeX. So uh, now this is, uh, I don't know. Now all of these are formatted in LaTeX or specifically Excel LaTeX. You'll see we got not you know nice little flourishes on the text, stuff like this, uh, footnotes, all the stuff you need in a book. You know what I mean? And nice, easy to read, nice, and in the Garamond font as it's supposed to be. Um, but so anyway, you can get all of these. Uh, I have five different books so far: uh, four paperbacks, one hardback. Actually, let's go through them all. Just to, uh, let me explain why I am reprinting these books in particular. Um, so the first one, actually, well, we'll go back here. So this is Anti-Modernist Papal Encyclicals. This is actually a compilation of several different uh, highly based papal encyclicals. Those are just like letters that popes send out to different, uh, to different people in the church, stuff like that. So we have On Liberalism and Religious Indifferentism, um, back in the 1800s, you have uh, restoration of Christian philosophy on capital and labor. That is the one that I guess sort of founded the philosophy or I guess the, the Catholic social teaching about, I guess, I don't know if it's called that in the encyclical, but nowadays people call it distributism. Okay. It's the idea that, you know, more or less, um, you know, a, a, the economic ideal of society is that family units are maximally financially independent, including, you know, their property and stuff like that. Uh, in contrast to both socialism and capitalism, whatever. Uh, on the doctrines of the modernist, on Christian marriage, on atheistic communism. Um, all of these packed into one, one volume that is actually pretty much normal book sized. Um, so I wanted to do this just because I had read some of these encyclicals and I thought they were worth uh, looking at. And it'd be nice to have them in print so you can get those there. Um, one book that you can actually get this, this is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is probably the one book that I'm reprinting that you can actually find in other places. Uh, but I just wanted to do it here. It's a nice, this one is actually a pocket size book. Um, so it, it is Marcus Aurelius's personal reflections. His kind of, I don't know, I, like it's not like a book of Proverbs. It's more like his advice and, and stuff like that. It's really written to himself. It's the kind of thing, it's like good for light reading. So again, you can literally put it, put it in your pocket or if you're like a girl watching my channel, I guess a purse, um, this is a good one as well. And I will also say the prices you see here, they might be different because they will adjust to where, the site will automatically adjust them to wherever uh, it is shipping them to, wherever you are. Uh, the, the site ships globally, not just America, not just Europe, not just Australia. Uh, everywhere in the world, I've had orders already in the past six months to Africa, South America, like everywhere, okay? Um, if your country is there, it should probably work. Uh, the reason I went so long without telling people that I've finished this site is just to make sure the kinks have been hammered out. Um, and I think they have. Um, um, I actually do not do the shipping. Another company does the shipping for me. But anyway, so those are those two. Um, one little one I have, this is super short, the, um, uh, this book by Ro Roger Bacon. Roger Bacon's works are very hard to find. This is very short, okay? Uh, but this is just something I wanted to have in print. It's, it's pretty cheap and it's small. Uh, and this one is written in Latin, okay? So the other two are in English. Uh, these two are in Latin. Um, now, this book, Etymologies, I actually highly recommend to people. This is like the big, 
more beefy, um, like hardback. This book, actually, I don't know how I got it down to like 400 something pages. Originally, when I first uh, put it out there, it was like 700, 800 pages, but it looks very nice. It's not like super small print either. Maybe it looks small here, but um, it's just a, this is a fantastic book for anyone who is like learning Latin or knows Latin or wants to learn Latin because it is basically the, the book of etymologies. This is written by Isidore Seville. It was kind of like in the late Roman empire. It's probably right between classical and medieval uh, periods. Um, it, it was kind of like a consummation of um, just a bunch of classical learning. It's really an encyclopedia. Uh, and he talks about there are 20 different books in it, sub books in it that talk about all of these different topics and stuff. Uh, and it's great for people learning Latin because it's written in a very simple Latin uh, that you can really pick up anywhere and read read about any kind of topic. Um, if you actually, well, let's pull this one up here because I don't know, it's a little, I think it's worth looking at. Uh, they're all worth looking at, but this one is kind of big. So, uh, where's the tech file? Here it is. Um, so it has, well, I don't know, I guess you have to read Latin to, to read all these, but uh, a whole bunch of different chapters on different topics and stuff like that. So if you are uh, anywhere, even if you're not learning Latin yet, this might be something worth looking at that'll definitely help you just because it's written so, so it's a great way of reading an original text um, that is pretty accessible and it's, it's nice and big and you'll actually learn lots of stuff from this book because there's a lot of stuff he talks about that I don't know, you, you probably don't know. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, I'm, I'm actually reprinting the Books of Enoch and Books of Jubilees, or Book of Jubilees. Um, there are three different Books of Enoch uh, and one Book of Jubilees. These are, um, these are books, these are kind of non-canonical books of the Bible or apocryphal books of the Bible that are of hi highly of interest. Uh, the Book of Enoch, the original Book of Enoch, actually, it probably should be in the Bible, frankly. Um, it's actually even quoted by a lot of biblical authors, um, but it is a book on the life of Enoch and the Watchers, like the Nephilim and, you know, all this kind of stuff. I don't know if you're into paranormal stuff, you may have heard of this, this kind of thinking, but, um, you know, there's a lot of lore that's not actually explicitly mentioned in the Bible, but... Uh, the book of Enoch is on a lot of that stuff, you know, the, the sons of men coming down to heaven and like, you know, having children, you know, like demonic children with women, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, you don't, if that sounds totally weird to you, I guess you'll have to get this book and read it, but that's what the book of Enoch is about. Uh, I included the other two books of Enoch. It, it's, they're not actually written in sequence. They're actually, um, just different books of Enochian lore written later on. Uh, so I have the Slavonic Enoch. That's usually Enoch two. And uh, what I call the Revelation of Metatron, it's sometimes called that. I just wanted a different name, but that's also called uh, Third Enoch. Uh, and the Book of Jubilees is kind of like a, a commentary to Genesis or like a parallel book. And it includes dating and stuff like that. So um, anyway, these books are just really hard to find. Uh, like in print, you can go on eBay right now and get a really junky copy of it. Or you could get this nicely formatted one that... You know, has the numbering actually working out and stuff like that. Um, and so I'm very happy with the results I've had from this. Um, so I recommend everyone to go here and subscribe to the RSS feed, please, because obviously I only have five books here now. I have a bajillion that are in progress. Actually, right here, I'm working on the Opus Tertium by Roger Bacon. This is another book that's going to be in Latin. Um, oh, just to be clear, these three, these three are in English. You can read, it should say, yeah, it'll say English. Uh, and those other two are in Latin. Uh, this one's going to be in Latin as well. Uh, soon I have, uh, actually I'll show you the folder. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff that I'm working on now. Um, so I have an alchemy reader that I want to have pretty soon. Uh, I want to have like some, you know, Caesar's, uh, uh, Gallic Wars and stuff like that. Patriarcha by Robert Filmer, like a whole bunch of stuff that I'm working on right now. Um, all of these different folders are different things. Uh, and a lot of them will have illustrations, like there are a couple illustrations and etymologies, they're kind of small. Um, but uh, when I have the alchemy reader, there are a whole bunch of like woodcut carvings that I want to include, I mean, you know, as images. So there's just a whole bunch of stuff I plan on doing. So please go here. Um, you will, I mean, if you buy something, it's probably in time for Christmas. Uh, so you can go ahead and go there now, get whatever you want. I will add more stuff to this later. 
Uh, I will probably also put an FAQ page, but mm -hmm. I'll go ahead and preemptively um, answer some FAQ. Uh, firstly, I think I mentioned before, maybe I didn't, but if you go to any of these, you will get a price here, and that price is adjusted to your area. So that includes shipping and handling. There's no like extra fee or extra tax. That include like this. If you get this and it says $30, uh, that is including shipping, handling, taxes, all that kind of stuff. Thankfully, I'm using this processor that just does everything automatically for me. And they send them for me as well. Um, so I'm using Lulu as a print-on-demand service. Um, the people who have... I, I've probably had, in the whole six months I've been doing this, I've had hundreds of orders. I've probably had one or two of them where Lulu messes up a shipping thing. Um, and if you have any problems, just email me or email Lulu. It's lulu.com and you can open a support ticket. But I will put a FAQ here in a second. Um, additionally, a lot of people have asked, when I first started the site, I did accept cryptocurrency payments, Bitcoin, Monero, and Ethereum. And the problem with that, ironically enough, is I got so many of them. Um, because I have to pay for shipping and handling in fiat, uh, and uh, when, I, when you place an order with me, I have to basically buy it in fiat as well. Like, I have to buy it in American dollars. Um, uh, if I were to get too many Bitcoin or Monero orders... I might actually be negative fiat. I might be making lots of Bitcoin or Monero, and that might be good in the long term. But um, uh, I have paused cryptocurrency purchases, at least for the rest of the year. And that is just so I can get up a treasure chest of like, um, like in the account I have for this so I can pay expenses for future prints. Uh, but as it is right now, buy as much as you want in terms of fiat. Buy for your friends, buy for your mom, buy for your dad. I've had a couple people who have bought a couple of these for like uh, libraries. Like if you want to buy a couple copies for libraries and stuff, uh, that's fantastic. I appreciate that. And as I said, I will have many more coming out soon. And many more people, if you have any uh, suggestions, feel free to email me with those. Um, trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, again, it ships pretty much everywhere in the world. Um, I it, And it's been very successful. I, I've gotten all of the errors uh, kind of hammered out of this, so it should be working pretty great. It is it is nice and simple. It's just me and you and the print-on-demand service. Uh, very nice. I'm um, trying to get, think if there's anything else. But yeah, go get these books. Get these books out of print, and if there are any books you want to see that are out of print in physical format, tell me, and I will probably... Um, if you give me a good uh, suggestion, I'll send you a free copy once I've finished it. Uh, but it does take, take some time to do this, and of course I'm working on like all of these different... Uh, uh, yeah, I want to have the Alchemy Reader done next, and um, that's going to be in English. Um, and a bunch of history books. I, I have uh, now. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna talk about it for a while. I have like the Venerable Bede, a lot of his stuff. I have. I want. Uh, oh yeah, I have a book that I'm getting ready. Uh, that's like Aquinas on sex. So Aquinas's works are like too way too big to like reprint. I'd have to have like forty thousand volumes. But I am thinking of doing like Aquinas's. Uh, views on sex, right? So the a book on that, or Aquinas's views on X or Y or Z. Uh, just got, I know that's a very like clickbaity title, but it actually is. A, there's some good stuff that he has written on uh, sexual mores that I think is is worth getting out there. So either way, that's about it. LindyPress.net, LindyPress.net. Go there, get the RSS feed. See you guys next time.